These are the craziest things billionaires do for fun. You can expect the classic super yachts and private islands, as well as some activities which are, uh, let's just say, a lot more specific. What we're saying is billionaires can be pretty weird. Strap in. Number 10. Prince Al-Walid's Medieval Entertainment Saudi royal Prince Al-Walid bin Talal isn't using his money for flashy gadgets. In fact, he seems to be the expert in bringing back old-school royal entertainment. You know, the kind that existed in the days when the main hobby the royals enjoyed was being cruel to the less fortunate. Prince Al-Walid was insanely rich, but as an adult, he made a couple of smart business investments that means he's now even richer. Today, he's worth about $20 billion. So what's his favorite thing to spend his money on that isn't a private jet? It's little people. Prince Al-Walid seems to think being small is the funniest thing in the world. He loves being surrounded by small people. So he hires people with dwarfism or other conditions affecting their height. Their job is to entertain him. Yes, we know how icky this is. If they're lucky, they have to behave like court jesters and do silly things to make the prince laugh. That's bad enough already, but the prince can be pretty dark when he's in the mood. He sometimes hosts competitions to see who can throw the little people the furthest, and he thinks that's okay because he provides a pillow for them to land on. There's also at least one story about him throwing money into a fire and making the little people pull it out before it burns, even if it meant they burned themselves doing it. It's just as bad as it sounds. I guess sometimes you really can have too much money. Okay, we know we've given you a lot to deal with with that story, but not all billionaires are bad, we promise. Sometimes they just want to live out their childhood fantasies. Number 9. Clive Palmer has the weirdest projects. Clive Palmer made his fortune off coal and iron ore. He's currently worth $15.2 billion. But there's nothing weird about the way he made his money. A lot of billionaires share the same story. What is weird is what he's spending it on. You won't believe it, but his expenses basically boil down to two things. A second Titanic and dinosaurs. Yeah, you heard it right, I said dinosaurs. Let's unpack these strange projects one by one, starting with the dinosaurs. In 2013, he opened Palmersaurus Park, which is exactly what it sounds like, a park filled with animatronic dinosaurs. I guess he looked at Jurassic Park, realized the technology wasn't there, and went for the next best thing. Technically, you can go see the strange attraction, but sadly he's priced it like a billionaire. He charges over $100 for a family of five to get in. You'll probably want to leave pretty soon after arriving, too. The neighbors claim they can't sleep because the dinos roar all night. Has he not realized they're not real dinosaurs and that means they can have an off switch? This question will probably never be answered. As for his Titanic dream, he's planned to build the Titanic too and actually sail it. He hasn't noticed that the whole world is wondering if that's the worst idea ever. It should be a near-exact replica of the doomed nine-deck White Star Line ship. He's even ordered an exact copy of the Grand Staircase featured in the 1997 movie. Yes, we said the movie, not the actual ship. There seems to be a theme here. Its estimated cost was about half a billion dollars. When asked why he did it, he answered, because I can. He also said it was totally fine, because this one will have enough lifeboats for everyone. But you'll probably still be glad to hear that it hasn't happened. It was meant to be completed by 2018, but it doesn't seem to exist yet. It's probably a good thing not to bring back the most ill-fated ship ever to sail the seven seas. We can't help but think that Palmer just has too much time on his hands to watch movies. At least Palmer simply builds any toys he wants. The next billionaire on our list did something terrible to get his hands on something he wanted. Number 8. Hunting Endangered Animals You probably think that hunting a critically endangered animal is highly illegal, right? Well, sadly, you'd be wrong. Sometimes if you have enough money, you're allowed to do whatever you want, no matter how morally wrong it is. 
Seeing as there are fewer than 5,500 black rhinos left in the wild, you'd think they'd be protected. I mean, killing one would seriously jeopardize the entire species. But Lacey Harbour, who was 81 years old in 2017 when this happened, wanted to shoot a black rhino. So he did. Harbour was allowed to hunt this rhino after winning an auction at a Dallas safari club in December 2016. He bid a shocking 275 grand for the hunt. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like an incredible amount of money to do something terrible. It looks like he thought it was worth it. The money was given to the Namibian government, and they handed him the permit that made the hunt legal. Afterwards, Harbour posed for photos with the dead animal, smiling and holding up his gun for the world to see. But it wasn't over. See, Harbour owns the Harbour Wildlife Museum in Sherman, Texas. His goal was to mount the body of the endangered animal as a display. Does he regret it? Nope. In fact, he claims that not only was he totally within his rights, but he also apparently has documents to prove that shooting this rhino means he's gone above and beyond what anybody else in the world had ever done to help save the species. He says that killing the endangered animal provides incentives to local communities to conserve the species. That's a pretty big claim especially since the one he hunted down was already in a conservation area designed to protect the last few black rhino that are walking the earth. We can't say we agree that taking a few of them out will help. Think that's the worst thing a billionaire has ever done for fun? It could be, but the next billionaire on our list is trying to give Harbor a run for his money in his own way. Number 7. Stuart Rar Creates His Own Fun 77-year-old billionaire Stuart Rar made his $3.4 billion fortune in the pharmaceutical industry. But since becoming rich, he's declared himself to be the number one king of all fun. But all that title does is present us with a very interesting question. Is he really fun, or is he one of those people who thinks they're fun but really, people will leave parties rather than speak to them? You won't be surprised to hear it's the second option. His version of fun seems to be based on sending out email blasts featuring photos of himself partying with naked women. Everyone in his huge list of influential contacts is used to receiving these bizarre emails. It also seems like some of the photos they were forced to look at also feature a naked RAR among all the naked women. Do you need a reminder that he's in his 70s now? It does put those emails into perspective. But wait, he gets even crazier. Uh, I mean fun. In 2010, he got himself banned from the popular sushi chain Nobu. Nobody mentioned exactly what he did, but it can't be good. Then, just 10 days later, he allegedly pulled a gun on an elevator operator in Trump Tower, and he was sent to a psychiatric hospital as a result. I guess too much fun is a bad thing. We should mention that he's also known for his generous philanthropy, but we can't help but think that he's got to give his money away to stop people from getting too angry. So we know for sure that you don't want to hang out with the number one king of all fun, but you wouldn't want to follow the next billionaires on our list either. Number 6. Submarine Trips Billionaires seem to love visiting places most people don't get to go, and one of those places is deep in the ocean. Millionaire investor Victor Vescovo famously went on a five-deep expedition to visit the deepest points in all five of the world's oceans, including the Mariana Trench. But there's another more famous story about a genuine billionaire going exploring underwater. The world was recently captivated by the tragic story of the ill-fated Ocean Gate Titan submarine. None of the people on board survived the trip. Luckily, on this occasion, one billionaire didn't get on the submarine. Jay Bloom, a Las Vegas investor worth $2.53 billion, revealed text messages that showed he'd been offered two seats on the trip down to the Titanic shipwreck that ended in disaster. He saved his own life and the life of his son by declining. It just goes to show that even billionaires aren't always safe, no matter how much they pay for the ticket.
Deep sea exploration is obviously a very dangerous billionaire hobby, but there is another one which seems equally risky. Number 5. Trips to Space The new big trend that billionaires have become obsessed with is space travel. It's in the news all the time and has even become known as the billionaire space race. The big hitters in the field are Elon Musk with his SpaceX project which aims to colonize Mars, Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin which aims to establish an industrial base in space, and Richard Branson's Virgin Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit, which are mainly about space tourism and super-fast suborbital space flights between Earth's continents. Now that space travel has become advanced enough that you don't need to do rigorous astronaut training anymore, billionaires seem to be loving their new form of exclusive travel. It might not be physically difficult, but it's still very expensive, which they seem to love. According to Virgin Galactic, a tourist ticket for a 90-minute space flight still costs about 450 grand. So for now, that's a hobby exclusively for billionaires. And speaking of Branson, it turns out he has some less obvious ways of having fun, too. Let's find out what they are. Number 4. Richard Branson's Wholesome Hobbies Richard Branson seems to be one of the most normal billionaires out there. You'd be pretty shocked if you saw him hosting a Prince Alawalid style party, right? But that doesn't mean he doesn't have his own crazy hobbies. Most of the time, the owner of Virgin just quietly sticks to himself. But sometimes you'll hear about something he's been doing that makes him stand out from the crowd. One thing he seems to like is pushing himself in demanding physical tasks he sets for himself. That's pretty rare for billionaires who normally get a taste for the good life and would rather stay in the comfort of their luxury home. But there's one thing that Branson loves doing that's much weirder than that. He seems to be really into playing dress up. All right, in his defense, that time he was photographed dressed as a mermaid had a good reason behind it. He was helping to raise awareness for World Oceans Day. But that doesn't explain all the other times he's hit the streets in a bizarre costume. He's been snap dressed up as a bride, a flight attendant, a pirate, and has even sported an Easter Bunny costume. There's no explanation for any of these photos, so we can only assume he does it because he genuinely thinks it's fun. Sure, it's slightly unsettling, but it's pretty wholesome compared to some of the other activities we've featured on this list. I guess if you have that much money, there's nothing stopping you from living every day like it's Halloween. Branson's hobbies are pretty niche. The next hobby on our list is something you'd expect all billionaires to own. Number 3. Buying Private Jets Owning a private jet is a classic billionaire ambition. It's often one of the first things people purchase when they become really rich. But it's not just about comfort. These jets are often just about one-upping other rich people. So, of course, we took a little look into the biggest and most expensive private aircraft of all time. But who owns them? Well, Saudi royal family member Prince Alwalid bin Talal's is back for another appearance on our list. He already owned a $220 million Boeing 747-400 when he clearly decided he could do a lot better than that. We've all heard of a jumbo jet, right? Well, Prince Alwalid's one was even bigger. In 2007, he paid $319 million for an A380 double-decker super jumbo jet. In case you're wondering what a super jumbo jet is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the world's largest passenger aircraft. As if that wasn't enough, he started ordering upgrades on his giant plane. And they weren't small. He wanted an elevator over three floors of the plane. Yes, I said three floors. And he knew exactly how to fill all that space. He wanted a private suite, a Turkish hammam, and even a space for concerts. He also said he needed space for his two horses and two Rolls-Royce cars. Soon, all the add-ons had increased the price of his new toy to a whopping $500 million. You literally couldn't beat the aircraft in size. So, you won't be surprised that Prince Alwalid was the only person to ever order one. 
I guess even billionaires can't afford a plane that big. Just think of the price on the upkeep. Before it was even ready, however, he sold the super jumbo jet to an undisclosed buyer. We don't know where it is now or why the prince changed his mind about owning it. Maybe he realized it was literally too big to land at most airports. But since this one has seemingly gone missing since it was collected, we'll mention the other biggest private jet in the world too. This one belongs to Hong Kong real estate tycoon Joseph Lau, who has an impressive estimated net worth of more than $13 billion. His Boeing 747-8 is the longest and second largest commercial aircraft ever built. Inside, the jet boasts almost 5,000 square feet of floor space and a spiral staircase to connect the two floors. Other than that, the interiors have been kept a secret. But rumor has it you'll find a lavish office, several guest rooms, vaulted ceilings, and an onboard gym. The basic price for one of these is a whopping $367 million. But Lau's additions would have cost him an extra 153 mil. The Sultan of Brunei also owns one of these beauties, but it technically belongs to the state of Brunei and therefore isn't a private jet, so we don't think that counts. A private jet is a pretty obvious billionaire toy, but the next billionaire hobby on our list is totally unexpected. Number 2. Playing the Ukulele Wait, what? We've already seen that most billionaires spend their time on giant yachts or flashy jets. Why is Warren carrying a ukulele around? He's worth $120.8 billion. Well, if you know anything about Warren Buffett, this might just make sense to you. He's famously frugal and totally ignores the billionaire lifestyle. He's lived in the same house since the 1950s. He drives a 2014 Cadillac XTS that he bought cheap because it was damaged by hail, and he lives on a diet of McDonald's and Diet Coke. Nothing about this man screams billionaire, so we're not surprised his hobbies are a little unusual. He started playing the ukulele decades ago, and he once played a duet with John Bon Jovi for the Forbes 400 Summit on philanthropy. Also, this is gonna sound like a joke, but he released his own version of the 1971 commercial, I'd Like to Buy a Coke, as a tribute to the 100th anniversary of the iconic contoured bottle. Yes, he does like Diet Coke that much. We tried to tell you, when he's not playing the ukulele, he's unwinding with a game of online bridge. He plays most Mondays with three other partners, and sometimes Bill Gates makes an appearance. They're good friends, apparently, even though Warren takes him to lunch at McDonald's and pays for it with coupons. No, seriously, none of this was a lie. At least Buffett's hobbies are good old-fashioned fun. It's kind of cute, actually. But he's the exception. The last item on our list proves most billionaires don't know how to have fun without spending money. Number 1. Trips on Super Yachts Another billionaire cliché these days is the purchase of a gigantic, insanely expensive superyacht. They cost tons of cash to purchase, and then even more to keep them running and staffed with a crew. But some billionaires insist that bigger is better. And the race to pay the highest price tag for the largest yacht is currently being won by Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich. His superyacht is apparently the second most expensive and second largest superyacht in the world, at a gigantic 533 feet. It's obviously full of flashy add-ons and features two dozen guest cabins, two swimming pools, two helipads, and more hot tubs than you can count. But the hot tubs are far from being the coolest thing on the yacht. The most mind-blowing features sound like a list of things a child would want on his imaginary boat. There's a missile detection system, bulletproof windows in key areas like the primary bedroom, and an anti-paparazzi laser shield. He claims these features are just for privacy and security reasons, but we'd bet they're there for cool points. As if that wasn't enough, any disaster that happens on the yacht can be avoided by jumping into a mini-submarine that can reach 164 feet under the ocean surface. Although, be warned, because it's only big enough for the most important people on the yacht. We'll bet you're wondering what something like that cost, right? Well, it was built for an astounding $700 million. 
But if you're wondering why we're dedicating so much time to the second most expensive yacht, there's a good reason for it. The most expensive one, the History Supreme, has never actually been seen in a major port, and rumor has it that the yacht might not actually exist. Some people think it may have been a publicity stunt by Malaysia's richest man, Robert Kwok, who claims he owns the mysterious yacht. We should also mention it's not as big as the one Abramovich owns. It's 100 feet long. Instead, Kwok claims its price tag was so high because of its lavish finishes and accessories. On board, you'll apparently find a statue constructed from genuine T-Rex bones, a liquor bottle embedded with an 18.5 carat diamond, and a primary bedroom with one wall made from meteorite, while the other wall is a 24 karat gold Aqua Vista panoramic wall aquarium. If this yacht really does exist, there's no doubt it's pretty impressive. If we've learned anything from this list, it's that billionaires are weird, but they also love expensive toys. They can't afford everything, though. Just take a look at our video about the car so expensive that not even billionaires can afford it.